God wants to speak to us. He wants to speak with us about himself, that we might know the true nature of God. And God wants to speak with us about ourselves, about the meaning of our life and his purpose and destiny. The letter to the Hebrews begins with the words, in various times in the past and in various different ways, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets. But in our own time, the last days, he has spoken to us through his son. In the prologue of his gospel, St John describes Jesus as the Logos, his was the last of the four Gospels to be written. It was written well after the other three. It was understood that St John lived on the island of Patmos, off the coast of modern Turkey. And there, in his old age, he composed his Gospel. His Gospel is not only an account of the life of Christ, but really it's more a meditation on the life of Christ. So the prologue to his gospel is indeed a meditation around the incarnation, around the birth of Christ. And it really is mystical in nature. It's there that he describes Jesus as the eternal logos. If you like, the definitive word the definitive word of God to humanity, the fullness of revelation of God to us. Logos is actually a Greek and not a Hebrew word. And it carries a particular meaning in Greek philosophy. Logos was understood in the Greek philosophy of his time as being the ordering, the ordering principle of the entire universe. So when St John uses the word logos to describe Christ, he really is firstly implying the transcendent essence of God that is contained in Christ. And thus St John begins his gospel with the simple and yet profound statement in the beginning was the Logos. And he goes on to say, this Logos was God. Jesus, the Logos, is God. And his prologue reaches its climax when St John declares that the Logos has become flesh and has dwelt amongst us. John the mystic, pondering the mystery of Jesus, sees him as the full and final word spoken by God to humanity. Thus, in a similar vein, St John begins the first, his first letter with the words, something which has existed since the beginning that we have heard, that we have seen with our own eyes, that we have watched and touched with our hands, the word Logos, who is life. This is our subject. 
So John is declaring here that it's what he has heard, what he's seen, what he's touched in Jesus is the eternal word, the Logos. In other words, God himself can be encountered in the person of Jesus Christ. A profound statement of our faith as Christians that in Jesus, God is revealed to us. So Jesus is the word. He is the revelation. He is the message. He is in fact the ordering principle of the entire universe. And he's become man. He's entered into our human condition. What is this Logos, Jesus? What is the word that is spoken by God to humanity through him? Perhaps the first thing is that God has said in Jesus is related to his birth in Bethlehem. Because he, the son of God, has not come in power and majesty. He's not come to control, to coerce or demand obedience. He's come in silence, in vulnerability, in humility. So God has come to reach out to us in a way that we can be reached and he's offering himself to us. And this alone is a profound revelation about the nature of God. God reaches each of us in humility and in the vulnerability of love. Perhaps the second revelation that was indicated by the angels at Christmas, and we heard it in the Gospel this evening, is that God, in sending his Son, has come among us with the purpose to save. And so the angels announced to the shepherds, today a Saviour has been born for you. He is Christ the Lord. We need saving. Each of us needs saving. The whole world needs saving. In the willingness of Jesus to heal, to restore health and well-being, we are shown the face of God as one of profound compassion for humanity in its frail and suffering state. Then in the teaching ministry of Jesus, we see that God has come to reveal how we should live. And this is not just a list of moral rules to be obeyed, but rather it is a call to purify the inner workings of the human heart. So we are called upon to grow in virtue, to seek humility, to embrace mercy and forgiveness, to strive for truth and to give to others out of love. Humanity has been definitively enlightened by the teachings of Jesus. And indeed, human society has in his words the foundations for harmony and peace and the flourishing of its citizens. In all of this, Jesus invites us into union with him and to union with him in entering into a spiritual kingdom to live our lives in profound union with God because the kingdom that Christ brought in and established is not a kingdom of this world. 
and it's not to be found in the spiritual, in the physical and material. But it can only be found in the ways of the Spirit. So St John, as he began his Gospel, declared Jesus as the Logos. In him, a final and definitive word has been spoken. Indeed, nothing more needs to be said. All we have to do is to ponder and heed this word. And in Jesus, we now know who God is. And we now know who we are. My brothers and sisters, on this holy night, let us embrace Jesus as the word who is life, as we heard St John. Let us no longer live for this world alone. Let us lay aside our soulless pursuit of the material and pleasurable and let us seek life, true life here and life for eternity in the Logos, Jesus born for us. Because Jesus is the ordering principle of the entire universe. So let us make him the ordering principle of our lives.